Hello everyone. In this lecture, I am going to talk about the C section or the cesarean section. So what it is? It is simply a surgical procedure. Uh, in this procedure, we will firstly incise the abdominal wall uh, by the mean of laparotomy and then after incision, we will encounter the uterus. So we will incise the uterus also that is called hysterotomy and finally we reach to the fetus. So this is the surgical procedure through which we incise the abdominal wall and then the uterus by means of laparotomy and the hysterotomy and finally expel out the fetus and the part of conceptus. So uh, it is the most common technique nowadays to deliver out the baby because uh, the incidence is steadily rising. Why? Because uh, there are some conditions where the mother is land up in high risk pregnancy and uh, we need to sort out that without causing any complication to mother and the fetus. So for the safe mean, we select caesarean section uh, for the delivery of baby. And also nowadays, the most of women are nulli paris over the age of 30 years. So again, she may have many medical complications that can jeopard her as well as her baby's condition. So we don't want that and the mother as well don't want this. So she voluntarily also requests to do this procedure to avoid this all complication. And uh, we have various modalities in various procedures in medicine. So using all these like uh, we have electronic fetal monitoring. By the use of this we can identify whether the fetus is having any fetal distress or not. And if we identify this beforehand, then we can avoid the various complications that can took place at the time of labor. So these are certain incidences that provoke us to move toward the C-section. Now uh, here we'll discuss what are the indication which are common to perform this procedure and what all types of C-section are there. So first we will deal the types. There are basically two types, uh, but others are also there. But here we will discuss only two. One is the lower segment cesarean section and the classical or upper segment cesarean section. So the type is basically depends on the incision which we are giving on the uterus. So as the name suggests, lower segment CS means we are giving incision over the lower segment. And the upper segment or the classical means we are giving incision over the upper segment. So we already read about in the previous videos of normal labor. Uh, there I discussed that um, at the time of labor or near term, the pregnancy where the, it reaches near term, the uterus is divided into two that is the active upper segment and the passive lower segment which is well developed near term. So, here uh, in LSCS, lower segment cesarean section, we give incision over the lower segment in a transverse manner. And this technique is popularized or first done by Munero care uh, because this is the most common technique which we are practicing nowadays over this classical one because there are some disadvantage of this classical that we'll discuss later. So the most common technique through which we are uh, practicing this CS is the lower segment cesarean section in a transverse manner okay and in classical the incision is vertical which is given on the uh, upper segment of the uterus. So uh, there are some condition where we cannot go with the transverse lower segment CS why because uh, the condition like if the woman is having advancing carcinoma cervix or any fibroid tissues are there, then we don't want to disturb them because they can further cause geopardy to the mother. And suppose if the woman already had many C-section previously, then there is more chance of adhesion of the scar tissue over the abdominal wall or maybe uh, the structure which is present underneath this wall like bladder. 
so if we further give this incision then that can cause damage to the tissues or the bladder which is lying underneath and that we don't want so uh, in repeat cs there is more chance of adhesion so if this is happening there then we don't go for that we'll choose classical one and uh, some some time uh, we need urgent or emergency cs and if we are going in emergency cs and uh, the woman is not uh, reaching her pregnancy till term then the lower segment in such situation is not fully formed if we are delivering prematurely so uh, because it is fully developed near term and if we are delivering out previously in preterm then it is not well developed and we want large space to deliver out the fetus and the conceptus so in such situation also uh, we'll select the classical one which is more roomy and it is easy to incise and it is easy to open speedily yes and suppose if the woman is having complete placenta previa which is majorly lying in the anterior aspect where the blood vessels are engorged very deeply and it, and along with that if morbid adherent placenta is there where the placental tissues invades very deeply in the wall of the uterus so in all these the placenta previa and morbid adherent placenta where the placenta is lying in anterior aspect which is very deeply invading in the tissues then also we cannot cut uh, in transverse manner in a lower segment because we can cut the tissues of placenta so that can land up the woman in shock if more bleeding happens so we should avoid that and in such situation also we can go with the classical uh, cesarean section so these are some uh, condition where we cannot go with the lower transverse uh, cesarean section here we can select the upper or the classical cesarean section these are the some condition where uh, this classical one is required but the transverse or lower segment is more common more popularized and it has many advantages over the classical one like near term what happened it is fully developed it is fully developed means uh, it is more stretchy and thin so if you are if you are giving the incision over the lower segment in a transverse manner then what happened the tissues will be cut will be less so there will be a less tissue cut and because of that there is a less incisional bleeding and the opposition of muscle tissues will be perfect when you suture up okay because uh, there are the less tissues that can easily oppose to each other when you suturing these all linings and uh, after the delivery the wound dehiscence will be less because the upper segment is usually more active because of these uterine contraction and the lower segment remain quiet so there is uh, more chance that the wo the wound or the tissues which are opposing heals better because the lower segment remain quiet so wound dehiscence will be less it means the wound will be healed fast and there is less chance of wound to be open up okay uh, the stitches the stitches which we are performing on these incision will be healed better there is no separation of these all suture after the delivery the chances of these all thing will be less and uh, in future pregnancies in subsequent future pregnancy the chance of rupturing of the scar the rupture of scar will be less okay so these are some benefits over this these classical one because in classical what happened the tissues which are cutting in the classical classical one will be more because the upper segment is comparatively thick yes so the more tissues will be cut then the more incisional bleeding will be there then as the more tissues are there then the technique to suture up these all lining will be more tough this is technically tough and the bleeding will be more the muscle opposition will not be so perfect yes and the chance of wound dehiscence it means the opening of this stitches will be more why because the upper segment remain 
uh, highly active after the delivery because it need to contract to expel out the remaining things which lines the endometrium so it is comparatively uh, more active uh, in comparison to the lower segment so there is more chance that uh, the stitches can be open up and the scar rupture the chance of uh, the rupturing of these scar tissue in subsequent pregnancy will be more. Now let's talk about the indication. Why we are performing this procedure? What are the reasons behind them? So firstly, the reason is antipartum hemorrhage. That is uh, the bleeding during pregnancy after 28 weeks of gestation. And the reason of this antipartum hemorrhage is mainly because of placenta previa and abrupt placenta. So these two conditions we already read in previous videos in detail. So you can go through with this all. Uh, placenta previa. It means the placenta is lying in lower segment. And suppose if it is complete one, then it is completely closing the vaginal root. So it won't be possible that the fetus will come out through this vaginal root. Yes. And in abruptio placenta as well. Uh, if the major degree of separation took place, the placenta gets separated prematurely and it is in major level, then there will be a more chance of shock, the more bleeding, the fetal death could happen. So to avoid this all complication, we can go with the caesarean section. Then if the woman is having contracted pelvis or cephalopelvic disproportion, in either of condition, what happened? Contracted pelvis means the birth canal is not that much roomy or spacious to allow the fetus to expel out because there are the fetal deformities, uh, the pelvic deformities uh, because the pelvis is small in size to allow the fetus to come out. And in CPD, cephalopelvic disproportion, uh, the, there could be the reason because of the fetus and because of the pelvis. Either the fetus is too large macrosomia to come out through this uh, accurate pelvis or maybe the pelvis is too small to allow the normal fetus to come out. So whatever the reason is there in CPD, again it obstruct uh, the fetus uh, to come out and it hampers the normal delivery. Then the other reason would be the dystocia that is abnormal labor. So that already we read about in previous videos. So here the reason for dystocia can be defined into three P's. That is the deformity in power, passage and passenger. So passage that I already discussed, if the pelvis is too small, or uh, any other deformity is there, any diameter deformity is there, then it won't allow the fetus to come through this canal. And uh, the passage is narrow to allow the fetus to come out. Yes. The power, it means the uterine contraction are not strong enough to allow the fetus comes down. Okay. So weak contraction can also land up in dystocia. Then the passenger, it means the fetus which comes out through this birth canal may be too big to come out through this narrow passage okay or with the normal passage so if the fetus is too large also then it won't be possible to uh, deliver out the baby normally so these are the three p's which could be the reason for dystocia then suppose uh, if the fetal Fetus in distress, it means the fetal heart rate is not reassuring. Uh, if we check through the fetal monitoring, electronic fetal monitoring, we ensure that uh, if the fetus is not in good status, that is uh, the fetus is not receiving proper oxygenation, then also uh, we cannot take a risk to deliver out the baby vaginally. We can go with the cesarean section. And suppose in any of the condition, if we are trying to induce the labor, uh, we are uh, using medical method or any surgical method, like we can use drugs or we can use uh, the amniotomy, that is rupturing of membrane. Either of the method fails, the fetus is not able to come out with these all induction method, then also we can go with the caesarean section. If the carcinoma cervix is there, means 
if there is cancer in cervix then again we cannot disturb that cancer because if we disturb that and allow the fetus to come out through the cervical or vaginal route then that can jeopard the health of the woman okay so we cannot disturb that then we can go with the cs cesarean section and if the woman is having any hypertensive disorder like severe preeclampsia eclampsia so in such condition also we uh, dealt about these all condition in very detailed manner uh, that uh, if the fits are not controlled the blood pressure is not controlling then we can not go with the normal delivery vaginal delivery we must go with the cesarean section and if the woman is having uh, medical disorders like diabetes or any cardiac or pulmonary diseases then also we cannot go with the normal mean and if the mal presentation and mal positions are there whether the woman is having breech presentation or the baby the fetus lying in a transverse lie shoulder presentation is there in neither of the condition because uh, what happened nowadays the operative vaginal interferences or the delivery is limited the use of forceps and ventus is not that much as it was previously so if these mal presentation and mal positions are there then no one wants to take a chance to uh, take any complication in regard of any fetus and mother so they just prefer uh, cesarean section so these are certain circumstances where we cannot go with the normal delivery or normal labor we just uh, select the cesarean section to terminate this pregnancy so these are the common indication and here in this lecture we have discussed about these all indications and the various types of cesarean section uh, through which we can terminate the pregnancy so the cesarean section is nothing that it is a surgical procedure where we can terminate the pregnancy by mean of uh, trans abdominal or trans peritoneal mean where we can incise the abdomen or the uterus to expel out the fetus and the product of conceptus thank you